In this video, I'm going to talk about G protein couple receptor, the structure and the mechanism of action. As we are seeing here in the diagram, now this is the cell membrane, this is the outer part of the cell membrane or where we have the extracellular fluid and this is the inner part of the cell membrane and this is that receptor. Now as we are seeing this is a transmembrane receptor and it is having an extracellular part and it is also having an intracellular part okay but the most interesting part about this receptor is that it is traversing the cell membrane seven times okay shall we count it this is number one two three four five six seven okay so it is traversing the cell membrane seven times that's why sometimes this receptor is also called as seven transmembrane receptor seven transmembrane receptor or because it appears like a snake which is traversing the cell membrane that's why this receptor is also called as serpentine receptor serpentine receptor okay so this receptor is called as g protein coupled receptor because the intracellular portion of this receptor is attached to a protein which is called as g protein or it is coupled to that protein which is called as g protein now what is this g protein g protein is a trimeric protein which is having three subunits here we can see there is an alpha subunit there is a beta subunit and then there is a gamma subunit okay and the alpha subunit is attached to the gdp now whenever a ligand comes and binds to the extracellular domain of the g protein coupled receptor so the first point is binding of the ligand to the extracellular domain of the G protein coupled receptor that is going to cause some conformational change in the receptor. And this conformational change that is the second point. The third point is now what is going to occur once there is a conformational change the GDP which is attached to the alpha subunit of the G protein gets converted into GTP. Okay. So once the GDP gets converted into GTP, now what is going to happen is the alpha subunit of this G protein is going to dissociate from the beta and the gamma subunit. Now this dissociated alpha subunit is going to activate some other proteins. What are these proteins? These proteins are nothing but intracellular signaling proteins. Okay. So once these proteins are activated, there is going to be production of some chemicals inside the cells and these chemicals are called as the second messengers via which the effect is going to happen. So now because these are called as second messengers, the ligand here which is coming and binding to the receptor is usually referred to as the first messenger. Fine. Now, what is going to happen once the hormone is removed from the receptor or once the ligand is removed from the receptor? What happens? There is reconversion of GTP to GDP. What had happened when the ligand has, was attached to the receptor? The GDP got converted to GTP. Now what is going to happen? The GTP is getting converted back to GDP. Now how does this occur? This occurs because the alpha subunit of the G protein has an intrinsic GTPase activity. Now, once the GTP has got converted back to GDP, the alpha subunit which had dissociated from the gamma and the beta subunit is going to come back to the gamma and beta subunit. It is going to attach back to the gamma and the beta subunit. So, this is how the G protein coupled receptor is going to act. Now, let me explain this in a better manner by giving you an example. So, here is an example. So again, this is the cell membrane, as you can see here. This is our cell membrane. This is the extracellular part and this is the intracellular part. So let's say here the ligand is epinephrine 
and this is the G protein coupled receptor. Or else, this receptor is also called as the beta adrenergic receptor. It's a specific receptor for epinephrine. So, once the epinephrine binds to the extracellular domain of this G protein coupled receptor, there is a conformational change which is going to occur in the G protein. And what do this do? What does this do? This is going to convert the GDP into GTP. So, once the GDP is converted back to GTP, what is going to happen? The alpha subunit is going to detach itself from the beta and the gamma subunit and this alpha subunit is going to go and activate some intracellular signaling protein. In this case, the intracellular signaling protein is an enzyme which is called as adenylate cyclase. So, once there is activation of adenylate cyclase, this activated adenylate cyclase is going to convert ATP into cyclic AMP. So, what is the cyclic AMP here? Here, the cyclic AMP is the second messenger. So, which is the first messenger? Here, the first messenger is the epinephrine. And what does this cyclic AMP do now? This cyclic AMP is going to activate the protein kinases. Now, with the activation of the protein kinases, the cell is going to respond. So, if it is epinephrine, there could be an increase in the force of contraction of the heart, there could be vasoconstriction in the blood vessels, there could be an increase in the heart rate. All these are the cell's response. I hope this topic was understandable and it was dealt in a very simple manner. Thank you. See you again.